Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everybody, I will uh, continue our lecture series on LQR design and uh, last two lectures we have seen uh, this uh, foundations of LQR followed by several extensions and things like that and we will follow up with, with uh, further ideas on, on LQR design uh, in this lecture as well. So, primarily two things I want to discuss in this lecture, one is uh, robust control design through LQR augmentation. Okay. So, it is possible to have some sort of a robust control design and we will see what is the what the kind see when you talk about robust control the robust control can be from several factors actually <laughs> okay robustness with respect to let us say external noise robustness with respect to modeling uncertainty robustness uh, as part of that is robustness with respect to parameter variation things like that actually because uh, no matter how much uh, information we can have or how much modeling you can do there will be some sort of on model dynamics all the time which includes parameter uncertainties as well actually. Yeah. So, that kind of uh, things can be handled through LQR and when you talk about external noise into the system, we will see later that it is still possible to use LQR under the assumption of Kalman, I mean under the augmentation of Kalman filtering basically. Okay, that means, that uh, essentially leads to this LQG design sort of ideas actually, linear quadratic Gaussian and things like We are not talking about that uh, here yet. <coughs> we will talk about robustness with respect to parameter variation or some sort of a forcing function sort of thing actually, we will see that. Okay. And the second thing what you want to discuss here is uh, solution of LQR problems uh, using this uh, state transition matrix approach sort of ideas. Okay. So, what happens here is uh, if you follow this Riccardi equation approach, you essentially end up with a n by n non-linear either differential equation or algebraic equation in terms of the Riccardi matrix actually. Okay. So, solution becomes uh, kind of involved and many times we will end up with uh, numerical solution for that part of the computation basically. So, we do not have to do that uh, once you follow this state transition matrix approach. The drawback out here is uh, the, uh, the problem dimensionality increases from n to 2 n actually. <coughs> so, we consider this uh, x dot and lambda dot something like together sort of ideas actually. Okay. Remember x is n dimension means lambda is also n dimension actually. So, you increase the dimensionality, but uh, kind of reduce the complexity sort of thing. Okay. So, that is the whole idea there. So, it is a different approach and I thought it is good to know that actually. And under this umbrella, we will talk about uh, soft constraint problems first, what we have been discussing so far. And it is also possible to discuss hard constraint problem. That means, you really want some some part of the states to, to go to a desired value is that is in equality sense and all that. It is possible to do that. There are certain drawbacks also in, in doing that way, but we will talk about that as we go along actually. So, let us get going. First is uh, robust control design for systems with parametric inaccuracies through LQR augmentation. That is what you are discussing mainly. So, what you are discussing? Normally, we write that uh, x dot equal to f of x u for nonlinear systems, assuming that uh, that set of parameter values are kind of constant actually, they do not vary okay? or they are known basically. So, they do not uh, play a significant role sort of thing, but in general. We, uh, we can also write this x dot equal to f of x u p, where p contains the parameter, uh, I mean parameter vector actually. Okay. Then for example, if you have a moving mass, then next, uh, the, the, the dynamic equation is m x double dot equal to f, that means m is a parameter of the system. Similarly, if a rotating body, moment of inertia becomes a parameter. If it is aerodynamic controlled uh, aircraft, then aerodynamic forces and moments, there are several coefficients, which can be thought about as parameters of the system dynamics things like that actually. Okay. So, those are the values that we are talking about uh, in, as part of the system dynamics actually. <coughs> okay. And we have a nonlinear system like this x dot equal to f of x u p okay. and uh, this what we are talking here is uh, we already know a u star okay. somehow some method is there I do not know we do not want to dwindle on that okay. we assume that u, u star is some control which is already designed assuming there is a parameter vector p star that means that is a that is the knowledge uh, which is known to us actually. In other words, if the mass of the vehicle uh, is something like uh, 102 kg and we assume that is 100 kg, 
So, that means, uh, that p star turns out to be 100, the 2 we really do not know whether it is 102 or 105 or 98 or whatever that is actually. So, that part is, is uncertain actually, but p star is largely known, I mean exactly known rather. So, if you if you take p star as a as a parameter vector which is completely known, then you can design a new star okay, based on and that will result in an extra trajectory. Okay. So, that means, uh, for a for a known set of parameter vectors, we already have the controller ready basically. It can come from optimal control, it can come from any other control as well actually. Okay. We, are, we are not bothered about that at this point of time actually. And one possibility is certainly optimal control, non, but nonlinear optimal control that the trajectory optimization ideas that we discussed before actually. Okay. All right. So, this is uh, what it is actually. So, now the but the reality is the mass is not 100 kg, but it can be 100 to 105, 98 whatever it is. So, we consider that part is something like delta p. So, p is actually a combination of p star which is already known to us and a and an unknown factor which is delta p actually. Okay. So, remember uh, you are we are not having any sensor or anything to measure that online, we just have to uh, live with that error actually. So, that is the concept to can we design something like uh, some controller which will which will address that actually. So, what is the objective here? Okay, objective can be described something like this. Okay, what we assume first is delta p is small, okay, we do not have to talk about large uncertainty and all that. We talk about small uncertainty that is that is what I just told about actually. If your mass is 100 kg, you consider 100 to 105 like that. So, it is kind of plus or minus 5 percent inaccuracy or maybe 110 kg, so 10 percent inaccuracy like that. We do not talk about uh, something like uh, 50 percent, 100 percent, 200 percent inaccuracy like that actually. That means, that information is a different class of problem altogether and we do not want to talk about that here. Okay. But largely it is like that in a in a norm, norm, in a normal situation, okay. Well, the, as a small comment, large uncertainties are not unrealities, they are also realities when they talk about uh, now people talk about something called reconfigurable control. If you have a large uncertainty, the system plant dynamics is, is largely different from what you discuss actually. So, for example, if aircraft is flying and you have a battle damage, that means half of the wing is gone or something is lost and things like that. So, that kinds of uncertainties are large uncertainty. We do not talk about that. What you are talking here is delta p, that means some parametric inaccurate information. That means, if internal data with some, some coefficients have been computed through polynomial fit and things like that, that polynomial fit numbers can be inaccurate, but that inaccuracy is not supposed to go beyond 5, 10, 20 percent actually. Okay. Similarly, similarly, mass moment of inertia cannot go much more than 5, 10 percent actually, so that, that way. Okay. So, that kind of uncertainty we are talking about. Anyway, coming back, what we, are just, what we are talking is parameter vector p is can be described something like this, p star plus delta p, where p star is known and delta p is unknown actually. So, delta p uh, by assumption remains small and uh, it also remains constant, it does not vary with time as well. Okay. We assume that it remains constant, we just do not know that part, okay. but, uh, but it does not vary with time. Okay. If mass is instead of 100, it is 105, then it is 105, it does not uh, keep on varying 105 to 107 to 110 and things like that online actually. So, that assumption is there. Okay. So, what happens now? Okay. If, you, if you have uh, p in, instead of p star, your state will develop as x not x star. Okay. So, we consider that uh, our real state I mean state variable uh, x, x of t is something like x star plus delta x actually. Okay. So, what is the objective? The goal is to come up with an extra control delta u such that the control will also needs to be put up, u, u should be equal to u star plus delta u basically. So, remember what you have done here is we have a plant, okay. we have a u star already designed for parameter vector p star which will result in x star. Now, p is not p star and which will result uh, x is not x star and hence we will need some other u not u star to compensate for all that actually. Okay. So, that means, uh, what we really require is to compute a delta u such that u star plus delta u will make sure that x behaves as if it is x star. So, x goes to x star as soon as possible actually. Okay. And because why? Because x star is already available to us, we know that everything good about that, because that is a nominal control design already done actually. Okay. So, in essentially if we can design some u delta u, so that u star plus delta u will enforce this, that the actual x to, to follow x star, uh, then our job is done actually. In other words, we want this delta x to, to go to 0 actually, okay. that is the problem. So, how do we do that? Remember delta p is not known actually. Okay. Now, using the Taylor series expansions about x star, u star, p star and all that, you can you can always write this actually, right. If starting from this, this nonlinear system dynamics, 
following the same principle of linearization of systems and again uh, that is a very standard procedure and uh, some of you do not know how to linearize the system of nonlinear system. Um, I actually had a small discussion about that in the very beginning class and uh, it is available in my other, other course as well actually. Anyway, so this is uh, uh, what it is. So, we can go back to this thing and we have a nominal x star, nominal u star and nominal p star available. So, using those values we can talk about a linearization about the, those values actually. So, we will end up with uh, this kind of thing where a star, b star and e star can be computed this way. Okay. These are matrices they can be computed that way actually. Okay. Just these Jacobian matrices and all evaluated at this, this nominal values actually. So, we have some sort of a linearized expression and all that there. Okay. All right. So, what, what is the idea here? Idea is to cancel the effect of delta p basically. Okay. So, if you have to cancel the effect of delta p, also you need some sort of delta u steady state because remember p is a parameter that delta p is a constant value. So, delta x dot is there. So, to cancel that effect, we need a constant bias control sort of thing that is delta we let us uh, talk that is some steady state control actually delta steady state bias control is delta u s s. So, assuming that is available okay, which is not 0 anyway. So, what we really need to have a cost function is something like this delta x would go to 0. So, that means that part is a quality function and remember delta u should not go to 0, but delta u minus delta u s s should go to 0 okay, because there is a steady state control we need to, to nullify that we have here actually. So, this uh, this difference would go to 0 that means we can construct a cost function with this difference being a quadratic function actually. And ultimately remember as long as you talk about 0 to infinity sort of thing the integrand values should ultimately go to 0 otherwise the cost function will remain unbounded it will go to infinity and all that and which cannot be minimized actually. Okay. So, that is a incompatible formulation a very quick check is whatever you are putting it as a quadratic function here that at some point of time uh, it should go to 0 and it should remain 0 there actually. Okay. So, we put it back and then tell okay, this cost function can be minimized actually. However, this turns out to be an uh, okay. I mean it is it is okay because it, this has to go but the, the problem here is we do not know this value delta u s s we do not know actually. So, even if we compute a difference like this delta u minus delta u s s equal to some expression and things like that it is virtually of no use because we cannot recover delta u because we do not know delta u s s actually. Okay. So, that is the problem there. Okay. So, that is all that is explained here actually. Okay. Since delta u s s is unknown and hence the cost I mean cost function cannot be used in practice and so let us find out some alternate ideas actually. Okay. So, as an alternative what will happen in steady state, steady state delta x is going to 0 that is our objective actually and delta x dot should also go to 0. Okay. This expression what we have here this should go to 0 and this should also go to 0. So, let us put it back so, 0 equal to 0 plus all that and hence delta u s can you can think of oh I can compute it basically okay. because this is there and okay, it is not a very good solution as a pseudo inverse getting involved and all that, but still it in approximate sense I can compute it okay. and as, as long as my control number of dimension of the uh, control variable are more than the dimension of parameter which is uh, sometimes true sometimes not true whatever. Okay, if that is true then this pseudo inverse is not good actually I mean pseudo inverse is not bad. Okay. So, then okay, you can think of oh, I can compute it and hence I can use this cost function, but again wait a second delta p the very fundamental nature of the problem the delta p is not known. Okay. So, we even though this expression is true in general we cannot compute it because the value for delta p is not known actually. So, this idea also fails basically. Okay. So, now we have to look out for some other approach actually. So, let us see what is there. Now, for, to, for further algebra, we will uh, define some of these variables, which is typically done in linear systems also. We redefine this uh, this state variable, control variable, and all that. Okay, x is redefined as delta x, and u is redefined as delta u, like that. So, we do not have to keep on talking delta x, delta u, delta p, all that actually. So, we we define it, and we remember that when we talk about x, u, p, and we are actually talking about delta x, delta u, delta p here. This is typically done in linearization, I mean, linearization procedure actually that way. Okay. And similarly, we define a b e as something like a star b star e star, so that we do not have to keep on talking about the star values also, you do not have to keep on writing star 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 necessarily basically. All right. And after this redefinition, we also define z as a new variable which is b u plus e p part. Remember, this is now x dot equal to a x plus b u plus e p in our new definition and all. So, this part what you have here, we define it as z actually. Okay z is b u plus e p total. Okay. 
and we also define some auxiliary control variable v which is the u dot actually ok. And with these redefinitions the system dynamics uh, turns out to be something like this x dot equal to x plus z plus z and z dot is nothing but z is de by defined like that remember p is a constant thing ok parameter and then e is constant. So, this derivative will not be there that is 0 the z dot is b is also a constant matrix. So, z dot equal to b times u dot actually ok. So, but u dot by definition is v. So, we can put it as v v. So, x dot equal to x plus z and z dot equal to v v actually ok. So, this essentially leads to this you have this x dot and z dot which is nothing but uh, this kind of ideas ok. You can put this system dynamics together and tell ok a is there and then this part is i ok z and x and z are there and then you have this z dot ok z dot is b so 0 0 and you have a b actually. So, x dot and z dot is nothing but a dot x plus b dot b. So, we have this actually ok. So, that is x this uh, once I define this capital X now ok this uh, I think uh, is forgotten to put that but uh, this is obvious actually x dot ok is defined here anyway. So, this capital X is this vector x and z ok. So, this uh, capital X dot is something this one so, this x dot is nothing but a hat times x plus b hat times b. Again, uh, the similar to what we have discussed in the last class, it turns out that if the pair uh, a b is controllable, then this pair a hat b hat is also controllable actually. Okay. So that gives us a hope to proceed further with LQR design. So we now formulate this kind of a thing. Okay. We have this uh, this cost function x transpose q one x plus z transpose q two z plus v transpose r at v because v is a control variable now. But remember actually v is nothing but u dot. So, we are forced to write it because uh, r this formulation new formulation v is a control variable and r has to be there ok because r cannot be 0 it needs to be positive definite. So, this r hat term is there, but physically it means that it actually minimize try we attempt to minimize the control derivative also basically. And this is also true in a in a physically meaningful sense because whenever we have a disturbance term acting on the system and all we do not want to kind of make the control variable sensitive to that too much actually. So, we want to have this control rate minimization as well also that is a philosophical argument, but mathematical argument is because v is a control variable we need to have some term for v transpose v also ok and so that is whatever it results in the physical interpretation actually. So, we have x transpose q 1 x and z transpose q 2 x this is just because you have to we can we can split this and then interpret that way. Okay. So, this part is q matrix largely and this part is r matrix actually. Okay. Now, what happens in a steady state situation ok now we, we remember you go back to this in a steady state situation this entire term which is now in a in a new notation it is b times u plus e times p. So, b u plus e p has to go to 0 there is no doubt about that ok that has to happen just that here we are not able to solve for delta u s s because delta p is not known. However, in, in steady state this is this condition should happen ok. So, this condition uh, this is what is written here this in steady state z has to go to 0 ok. So, if you define this q hat as something like this uh, partition matrix q 1 0 and 0 q 2 like that and by definition well, uh, this capital X is x and z the cost function turns out to be like this. So, you have a cost function which is uh, quadratic in terms of capital X and quadratic in terms of v ok. So, we have this standard quadratic cost function and we need to see ok this standard linear state dynamics also basically. So, with respect to this layer this state dynamic equation and this cost function now it is problem is compatible actually. So, we can go ahead and solve it actually ok ok, uh, but also just a remi remember this is a formulation which is quite similar to the case where the intention was to minimize the derivative of control. We have discussed all that in the in the previous lecture actually ok you can some of you who forgot that you can probably revise that as well actually very similar to that the development happens to be somewhat very similar to that. Anyway, so this is the cost function yes this or this is the state equation linear and this is a I mean cost function which is quadratic. So, we can go ahead and use our LQR theory. So, to get this one. So, what ultimately my control variable is v here. So, it is v equal to minus r inverse r is r hat here so r inverse b transpose b is nothing but this vector this vector 0 v transpose ok r inverse b transpose ok uh, sorry this one uh, ok r inverse b transpose Ricardi matrix solution 
p hat times capital X, capital X is x and z. So, my v is nothing but u dot now. So, I can substitute that as u dot uh, something like this. Okay. And remember z is not computable again because we do not know this delta p, the p is nothing but delta p, remember that actually. Okay. So, this is uh, p is not known, so z is also not computable actually. So, we cannot implement this and also remember this is a dynamic controller u dot and uh, things like that. So, we do not want that to implement either actually. So, how do you go about that? Now, the idea here is we know z, z is something like this. So, what is x dot, x dot equal to, okay, let me, let me write it here probably. So, we have this x dot equal to a x plus, plus b u plus a p, right. So, that is our, our formulation. So, this is nothing but a x plus b u plus a p, that part is nothing but z actually, okay. So, if I, if I want z, then z is equal to x dot minus a x, okay. So, this is what is, uh, what we can do here to compute z indirectly. We cannot compute z directly like this, okay. But z can be computed something like this actually. But remember x dot is uh, probably not available in sensor, it is not uh, advisable to use it also. So, what, what we do is further algebra like this. So, now remember u dot is something like this and z is something like that. So, we can substitute dash z as something like this and then get it as z is nothing but that. So, we substitute that and recover the x dot part here and recover the x part here and here, okay. x dot part coming from here and, and this part. And, and and that part can be combined here actually. So, you can define this as k 1 and define this as k 2. Then u dot is nothing but minus k times x dot minus k 2 times minus k 1 times x dot minus k 2 times x actually. But that is u dot. What we really need is u. So, we can now integrate both sides and tell okay, this results in a very similar situation what we discussed in u dot minimization and all that in the previous lecture. Essentially results in a PI controller actually. So, where k 1 times x minus k 2 times integral of x and all that, okay. So, this uh, uh, I mean ultimately we will end up with something like that where k 1, k 2 can very well be computed, that is not a problem. And these terms can very well be computed now because it all involves the deviation delta, remember x is delta x actually and also what you are talking here is delta u, okay. So, delta x is available, so delta x integral is also available, I can compute the integral uh, as a numerical computation sort of thing and it is all there actually. The initial condition as we discussed before, we can think that okay, there is no parameter variation to begin with and hence whatever controller you get that can be initial controller. Sometimes people use that as 0 also, but I will suggest that you use typically this, uh, I mean assume that uh, there is no parameter variation and then you, I mean you will end up with uh, this u naught computation as, as a regular LQR formulation sort of thing. Okay. Anyway, these are uh, subject to your implementation and once you start implementing, you will see which is better, which is less and all that actually. But the whole idea is uh, this control is now available in the form of a PI controller with some sort of a initial condition also basically. All right. So, this is how we can do that, uh, uh, this computation, okay. Uh, this is what I have already told that you not can be obtained as a regular LQ formulation, okay. And also remember the final expression what you are getting here is completely independent of p basically. Okay. So, this you can think of that okay my control does not require p and it there, there is all of the good objectives are already there here because x goes to 0 and z goes to 0, z is nothing but bu times bu plus cp that is what ultimately should happen right because you have this this expression right uh, x dot equal to x plus bu plus cp. So, once uh, x goes to 0, x dot goes to 0 and this term also goes to 0 then we are done. B u plus e p actually. So, that is z will also go to 0 by this formulation actually because there is a quadratic term for z also basically. Okay. So, essentially this p i controller guarantees that z goes to 0 and hence everything remains same actually. Delta x goes to 0 hence the original objective that we started with that delta x would go to 0 is met actually. Okay. So, this is how we we will end up with some sort of a robust controller with respect to the unknown quantity. We do not need this, we do not need to know the value of delta p. However, as a compromise, we need to know the value of delta x, which is also, I mean, which is justifiable actually. We, have, we must have sensors which should tell us how much delta x is appearing actually. So, using that delta x in an integral feedback and in proportional feedback sense, we will be able to compute our control, which will be able to do the job actually. So, that is how we will end up with a robust controller actually. Okay. 
So, to summarize a little bit because it is too much of a uh, argument here. So, we started with something like uh, our uh, our objective was to I mean we have a nonlinear system like this and we already designed u star x star assuming a p star value, but p is something different than p star ok. Hence, we wanted to compute a delta u which will which will augment with u star u star plus delta u should assure that delta x goes to 0 ok. We land or I mean we did this linearization and have some several arguments which did not work out and something is not feasible like that, but ultimately we redefine all these variables for, for sake of clarity. And here we landed up after defining all that uh, this z is something like this v is something like that and all we landed up some this some system dynamics like that. So, using this system dynamics which can be posed as like that and then using this cost function we can solve a regular LQR problem ok in this form. And then we can talk about ok my control variable is available as that way, but my control is uh, is a uh, that v ok is nothing but u dot. So, u dot is available that way and z is not available, but z I can compute it that way x dot minus a x dot thing ok. So, they remember z is of same dimension as this which is also nice actually ok. So, there is no no approximation involved here ok. So, can, can kind of directly compute that and then I once I put it here it uh, it takes this form and then I land up with this u dot is equal to some some gain times x dot minus some gain times x actually. If I integrate both sides I got a u equal to a proportional term and an integral term. Okay, so, I land up with an integral p i sort of controller and using only the deviation values of x we can compute the deviation values of u basically. Okay. So, this essentially results in a robust controller all right. So, this is uh, one way of handling this problem actually. All right, the next thing that I wanted to talk in this class is something very different and uh, this uh, turns out uh, we will go back to the solution approach altogether ok. Instead of Riccati matrix approach we will try to see some some other alternate approach which is uh, typically called a stress transition matrix approach ok. All right, so let us start uh, let us start that idea and the there are two things as I told for there is one formulation is soft I mean soft constraint formulation ok. The other one will be hard constraint formulation and soft constraint problem formulation goal or objective is exactly same as what you have been discussing actually. This it should minimize this cost function subject to this path constraint or system dynamics constraint and boundary equations are exactly same and remember T x of T f is free variable ok. Free means uh, not really very free I mean it uh, what you are talking here is it should remain as much close to 0 as possible depending on what value of S f I choose, what value of Q I choose and all that it will drive towards that actually ok. So, uh, so this is uh, the type of formulation that we are talking about here. So, how do you have a solution in an alternate setting actually that is that is the objective here and let us see how do you go about that ok. So, we go back to this uh, uh, necessary conditions of optimality and all. So, phi is uh, we discussed many times now by now. So, phi is like this and L is like that. So, phi is available and hence Hamiltonian h is nothing but L plus lambda transpose f. So, L is available from here and f is available from here ok. So, this is L plus lambda transpose f is available actually. So, the state equation turns out to be x plus b u which is there with us. Co-state equation is same and optimal control equation is same all these things we have discussed before actually. And after doing all these necessary conditions, uh, the very next logical step was to assume that lambda of t is a function of x of t, linear function of x of t. That means, lambda of t is nothing but p of t into x of t. That is what we proceeded. I mean, you assumed then proceeded with all these lambda dot and then substituted x dot u lambda dot all that and then carried out further algebra to land up with Riccati matrix equation if you remember that. But here we are not going to do that ok. What you are going to do is something different. And also, I mean, let us see what is going on here. And remember, this u is a closed form solution, is available in the as a function of lambda basically, ok. So, this function of lambda, whatever, whatever you are doing here, ok, can be substituted back here, ok. Once you substitute back here, this, these two functions, these two equations, x dot and lambda dot, can be kind of a coupled equation to each other basically. x dot is a function of both x and lambda, and lambda dot is a function of both x and lambda. Ok. So, that is the type of analysis that we want to carry for carry out further. So, we substitute uh, this uh, control expression in the state equation back here 
and hence we can write x dot equal to a minus b r inverse b transpose lambda. So, that is that part of it and lambda dot is, uh, is already available minus q x minus a transpose lambda. So, minus q x minus a transpose lambda. Okay. So, x dot lambda dot is something like that a times this one x and lambda. So, it is like available this way. So, this solution dictates now remember this is actually a linear system equations x dot equal to kind of a x sort of form, form actually. Okay, so, the solution can be written in the as a function of uh, this state transition matrix and all that each other that way. Okay. And if it happens to be a constant matrix that means a, b, r, q all these are constant things then this phi of t t f okay, happens to be something like a, a to the power uh, sorry e to the power a t minus t f okay, that kind of formula. Okay, let me probably write it also a phi of uh, t t f equal to equal to e to the power a t minus t f. Okay. If okay, a means okay, this a a whatever you are talking this 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 thing okay. a a times t minus t f provided all the entries of the a a matrix uh, are constant actually okay, it does not it does not vary with time. Otherwise, you cannot write it and you have to leave with this state transition matrix actually. Okay. There is a special case this takes a closed form solution that way. Anyway, so solution dictates that x and lambda of any time t is nothing but phi of t t f in all that actually. Then what actually? Okay. So, remember this also many times you might have seen that this is phi of t t 0 and x and lambda at 0. But phi is a general thing that means uh, state transition matrix can start from any time to any time. So, we can take the final time as reference time and then write the solution in the form of t t f not necessarily t t 0. Okay, we can so that is a small observation here actually and primarily because lambda of t f is available that is the that is the reason for that actually. Okay. And this exp expanded form I can write I can partition this matrix okay. remember this matrix is now 2 n by 2 n matrix okay, because the x is of n dimension lambda is n dimension. So, we have 2 n dimension in the left hand side and 2 n dimension right hand side. So, this has to be 2 n by 2 n that that 2 n by 2 n I can partition it to 4 n by n matrices and write it something like this actually. Okay. All right. So, now what do we know that less f lambda f equal to S f x f is a boundary condition right this final boundary condition. So, using that final boundary condition I can uh, I can write x of t from this equation x of t is nothing but phi 1 1 x plus phi 1 2 lambda. So, phi 1 1 x plus phi 1 2 lambda, but uh, remember this is x f and this is lambda f and lambda f is something like this. Okay. So, I can substitute lambda f as s f x f basically. Okay. Once I substitute that I know this is x f and x f multiplying to the right on both the expressions. So, I can take out this common and then this turns out to be phi 1 1 t t f plus phi 1 2 t t f into s f actually. So, this entire matrix what you are getting here Okay, I can define it as some capital X T T F. Okay. Remember, this this is not an augmented uh, state vector. Now, this is actually a state transition matrix. Okay, uh, which transitions this uh, X F to any other time X T basically. Okay. So, if you know X F value, then you can calculate X of T value using this thing. Actually, if you know all these entries basically. So, uh, so far, this is still a symbolic expression. We don't. We are not talking about how to compute and all that. In a second, I'll talk about that actually. Okay. Similarly, you can you can go back to this lambda of t expression here. Okay, and lambda of t turns out to be phi two one times x plus phi two two times lambda actually. So phi two one times x x f plus phi two two times lambda f actually. Again, you use this uh, lambda f expression s f x f substitute it back here, and then define this this entire thing as something like capital lambda t t f. So, you have lambda of t is nothing but this capital lambda times x f actually. Okay. So, this uh, x of t is uh, this way and this lambda of t is that way actually. Okay. So, this is what you summarized here x of t we got it something like capital x of uh, t t f times x f and lambda of t we got something like capital lambda of t t f into x f actually. Okay. So, at t equal to t f uh, we must satisfy the boundary condition as well remember that and what is the boundary condition you can think of something like this x f has to be equal to x f well you can think of it as a trivial expression but it is true anyway. But lambda of f has to be equal to s of x f that is also true these two must be true basically. 
So, using these two what you are getting if you put it back here ok what you are getting here is x of t f or x f is equal to this term t f t f into x f x of t x f is equal to x of t f t f into x f and similarly lambda of t f or lambda f is equal to this capital lambda of t f t f into x f alright. So, and this lambda of f is nothing but that basically ok. So, s f x f has to be if you consider that this is s f x f is equal to lambda of t f t f times x f ok. So, if you use this ok this expression ok. So, you can easily see that ok from this expression what you are having this capital X of t f t f is nothing but identity because this expression has to be identity and this from this expression you can see that lambda of t f t f has to be equal to s f. So, we have the boundary condition for these two state transition matrices you can this is a state transition, state transition matrix for x starting from x f and this is a state transition matrix for lum, I mean for lambda starting from again same x f only ok. So, uh, the boundary conditions are now available what about the differential equation is the are they still available it turns out to be yes because this is, if you put it back your uh, I mean expressions and all it turn out to be like that let us see that. We we know this is this is true x dot in the lambda dot are given something like this a times x lambda we just uh, derived that ok. If you substitute back this is what it is actually. So, we have this x dot lambda dot is a times x lambda ok and we know this uh, this expressions of x t and lambda t now ok this is uh, this is x t which you know this and lambda t which you know that actually ok. So, you substitute it back ok whatever you know. And remember x f is a fixed quantity this is not a time varying quantity x f is a fixed number finally actually okay, fixed uh, vector. So, you substitute so this is x dot is nothing but this capital x dot times x f and the lambda dot is capital lambda dot times x f right hand side is same thing actually a, a times this x is uh, this capital x times x f and lambda is capital lambda times lambda f. So, this leads to like a conclusion that this this uh, dot that x dot and uh, lambda dot ok has to be a times this this uh, matrix actually ok. So, that means, this state transition matrix uh, is a dynamic variable, but the differential equation for that is known to us actually okay. And remember this is actually a matrix this is a matrix. So, this is also a matrix so, what you are having here is matrix differential equation actually, but this matrix differential equation is not a non linear differential equation it is actually a differential equation uh, I mean linear differential equation it exactly satisfies the same differential equation that the state and co-state satisfy. Okay, that is the property of state transition matrix as well if you if you remember that actually. So, this state transition matrix is a is a linear uh, differential equation ok. Hence, we avoided this you know, this nonlinear uh, sort of Riccardi matrix ideas and all that and this uh, differential equation also we know the bound corresponding boundary condition actually. So, we can solve it ok. So, we can solve the you can find the closed form x solution now because once you have these numbers known to you this differential equation whatever it is uh, as long as these are not time varying it should be exponential solution if they are time varying you have to see if you if you have an expression explicitly available as a function of time then you can probably put that and, and try to still get some closed form solution basically. And if it is not explicitly available but most of the time it is implicitly available anyways for example, if your mass is uh, burning out and uh, or something is there which is which will give you some sort of a numbers only, but it does not give you an explicit formula for that. Then you cannot talk about a closed form solution per se basically, but you can still uh, integrate the system backwards from T f to T naught actually that is always possible. So, numerical integration from T naught to T f is always I mean T f to T naught is always possible, but that is not a major motivation here. We wanted to have a linear form so that for most of the problem we can actually do a closed form solution and many times if the if the everything is the time invariant that is the state a state matrices I mean sorry system matrices a b are time invariant and q and r by choice are also time invariant then a matrix has to happen to be time invariant ok. And then uh, you can solve a closed form solution in the function of exponent matrix exponential actually ok. So, that is the motivation uh, with corresponding boundary conditions known to us. So, that can be solved actually. Okay. The only small issue here is we have this uh, everything in the function of x f, but x f is not known remember that x f is free actually. What we know is rather x 0 okay. initial condition for state is known final condition for state is not known. 
So, how do you how do you kind of uh, avoid that problem? So, we know that uh, x of t is nothing but phi I mean this capital X of t t f x f. So, x of t naught has to be capital X of t naught t f x f okay. and also remember the state transition matrices are typically invertible they are they do not they are not singular matrices never actually. So, we can talk about inverting this actually and get it this one. Okay. So, essentially the idea here is you have this boundary condition and you have this differential equation you propagate it or have close one solution whatever it is and you ultimately land up with this this expression which is available to you okay. t naught phi this capital X of t naught t f will be available to you and, and because you know this actually. So, you can compute that also as a, as a, because this is always invertible. So, you substitute for x f now because x f uh, wherever you have this this x f term and all you can substitute that. Okay. So, we can substitute that and then finally, get a solution for this control. So, we can, what we will see that substituting for x f we will get this expression okay. this was x of t remember was x of t t f times x f. So, x f is now given as something like this. So, I can substitute that and lambda of t is lambda of t t f times x f and x f is this one. So, we can substitute that way because now lambda of t is available I can talk about a control available. So, control is minus r inverse b transpose lambda ok and lambda is available now here ok. So, I can substitute it back and tell ok this is my expression now ok. Remember that lambda coming from here ok and I, I kind of combine all the thing and that is my gain matrix k of t actually ok. As a small comment, uh, this k of t will happen to be same value numerically whether you come this way or you come from Riccati approach, Riccati equation approach. You can take any example and verify yourself also basically. Okay. So, this LQR problem typically admits an unique solution anyway. So, it, it will you will essentially land up with some sort of a same solution, but uh, coming from a different expression actually. Anyway, so this uh, this is available now u of t is uh, starting from x naught it is all available. But x naught can be uh, your value at any point of time. So, this is there are something called so that sample data feedback law and all that. So, uh, where the most recent sample time is is t naught and hence your x naught can be can be replaced to x of t. At any point of time that you are there you can consider that as initial time for rest of your time actually ok that which is to, which is typically true basically. So, instead of x naught you can substitute that as x of t and then you have got a k of t. So, you can write it that way. So, u of t is nothing but minus k t times x of t actually ok where k of t is computed that way. All right. So, this is all about this uh, state transition matrix approach, but these are all for soft constraint problems actually. Now, what about hard constraint problems ok. Now, this hard constraint problem what we are looking for is 0 terminal error ok and sometimes these are very uh, appealing uh, it has its own difficulty also, but these are sometimes the formulations and these are appealing especially suppose let us say you talk about a missile guidance problem then then you want to land up with 0 terminal error 0 terminal missed distance actually. So, the hard constraint turns out to be little more appealing than soft constraint we cannot talk about falling somewhere close to the target, but we do want to fall on the target basically. So, that kind of ideas there uh, can we do that. So, let us talk about some sort of similar formulations here we we'll talk about x dot equal to x plus v u again the same linear system dynamics with same quadratic cost function actually and purposefully we avoid this uh, this additional term here ok this uh, terminal penalty because what you are talking here is a hard constant penalty that means uh, x i of t f has to be 0 where i is 1 to q where q is less than equal to n. So, in other words you can have constraint on all state variables if you want to or you can have part of the state variable that you are interested in other part you forget it actually. For example, if you have again talk about missile guidance even you talk about position error only then velocity errors and all you can forget about it or sometimes this angle constant guidance are there then they tell part of the velocity vector which contains a velocity magnitude as well as two angles actually. So, magnitude you can forget but can you assure angle constraints actually that way. So, those kind of problems can be discussed and can be put uh, framed in this framework actually. All right. So, go back to that and then talk about x of t f is nothing but uh, uh, x 1 of t f and to x n of t f where this uh, constraint is given something like that x i of t f equal to 0 for i running from 1 to q and q can be less than equal to n ok it can be equal to n also basically. Okay. 
So, how do you handle that? When you have a hard constraint like that, okay, you remember that should, that should be equal to 0. So, the j bar or augmented cost function should see that constraint and that constraint is soon seen through this expression, okay, summation of this, this variable is equal to 0 anyway, but this is new i's are like Lagrange multipliers, but these are constant numbers, they are not time varying things actually. So, this additional expression is coming to picture, okay, 1 to q obviously, and the rest of things are free anyway, plus this, uh, this augmented cost function t naught to t f with uh, this one and that one. And also remember this formulation makes more sense when you have T f as a finite time formulation, because uh, we are talking about some state variable going to 0 at some point of time, we do not talk about it will go to 0 at infinite time and all that, now, that does not have too much of a physical meaning actually. Okay. So, typically these formulations are finite time formulations actually. So, anyway j bar is something this one and then this uh, L plus lambda transpose okay, f minus x dot, okay. we are talking about j bar remember it is not Hamiltonian j bar now. Okay. So, this is uh, this function plus all that plus lambda transpose, lambda is a Lagrange multiplier, nu is also a Lagrange multiplier, but lambda is a time varying function where nu is not a time varying function actually. So, now we have some fun, some uh, formula I mean some augmented cost function available to you. So, we can uh, implement the follow the earlier development of co-state equation, optimal control equation like that. So, this co-state equation because the, the, the expressions are not changed, only the boundary condition is changed. So, the dynamic equation what you have state equation, co-state and optimal control they will not change. So, they can straight away write it that way, lambda dot is minus q x minus a transpose lambda and u equal to minus r inverse v transpose lambda. Okay, and uh, lambda f obviously, you can calculate from here, okay, this is lambda f actually, it will come from here, del phi by del x f sort of thing. So, if you talk about uh, this, take this expression and uh, in operate the del phi by del x f sort of thing, then you will end up with this, uh, this expression, lambda f is nothing but uh, nu 1 to nu q coming from here and rest of the terms are not there, okay, x i x i when it is beyond, i is beyond q is not there, the expression. Okay, that means, uh, for those variables it is 0 basically, the partial derivative is 0. So, lambda f in del phi by del x f, okay, phi is something like this, we carry out the algebra, we will end up with this expression where nu 1 to nu q will be available, rest of the things will be 0 actually. Okay. And when q equal to n, then it will run through the entire vector, that is also there. Okay. So, but q is not n, then it will, it will stop somewhere actually. Okay. So, following the earlier development, what you can uh, what you can see is uh, like this: lambda dot is q minus q x minus a transpose lambda. U is all that. Okay, lambda f is nu one to nu q and lambda that way. So, the two point boundary value formulation talks something like this. It uh, uh, I mean it has this standard expression which you have already derived basically before. Just put it to your uh, your control variable u and then consider x dot and lambda dot together. We have done that just before actually. So, this is our system dynamics and what is our boundary conditions now? The boundary conditions x of t 0, x 0 is always available that is given, but at time t f uh, this is a constraint set that x of t f has to be 0 for i running from 1 to q and the rest of the values for that lambda of t f has to be 0, remember this is coming 0, 0, 0 okay? and these guys are not known, this lambda nu 1 to nu q are not known. So, it is foolish to kind of have a formulation which uh, uses numbers for that. This actually helps us uh, in finding a solution, but we cannot actually talk about a solution where you need this number information for these guys, we do not want that actually. Okay. So, what is available to us is the boundary condition in terms of x from i running from 1 to q and lambda of t f equal to 0 okay, nicely coming from here. So, you have n boundary condition 1 to q are that way and q plus 1 to n are this way. Okay. So, this has to be accounted for actually, but anyway coming back this is the system dynamics what we had earlier. So, we following the state transition matrix solution approach you can always write it that way x and lambda of any point of time t is state transition matrix t t f times the final time value x, x and lambda t f exactly same as what you have done for the soft constraint problem actually. Okay. So, you go back and then find out uh, all these things are uh, I mean compatible because soft, this soft constraint and hard constraint the dynamic equation remains same. Okay. So, the solution solution form remains same, but the boundary condition is different and hence the solution will be different actually. So, we have to concentrate more on the boundary condition how do you account for and all that. 
So, as far as the differential equation is concerned, this difference in the state transition matrix will, uh, will satisfy the same differential equation that we have studied earlier and let me recall that this is the state transition matrix differential equation that we discussed, it will follow that. Now, the boundary condition will, will be different, let us see that, this has to be accounted for. So, how do you account for the boundary condition now? Because lambda x and lambda t t f is given like this, okay. we can we can write it that way because this, this expression, right. Okay. So, we can write it x 1 to x n and lambda 1 to lambda n f, okay. but it turns out nicely that if you consider this state transition matrix, uh, I mean this is just expanded this one, but this this expanded form you remember for, for first 1 to q these are zeros, and there is something for q plus 1 to n in the I mean we, we know that actually, okay. these are free variables, so there is to be some value for that. But on the other hand for lambdas, we know this first 1 to q has to be nu okay, because this one okay, and rest of the things has to be 0 basically. Okay. So, you have we can think about except, except lambda as something like this which can be expanded all the way like that and nicely if you see this is 1 to q and then q plus 1 to n. So, essentially 1 to q and q plus 1 to n means 1 to n is available some values rest of the things are 0 anyway and this is a 2 n 2 n dimension matrix by the m vector. So, this is also 2 n dimension thing and this is 2 n by 2 n sort of thing. So, out of this 2 n dimension I mean 2 n elements the first q are 0 here and the last uh, this q plus 1 to n those guys are 0, n minus q variable they are 0 actually. So, whatever is non 0 we, we assign that we define that as something like a mu, the mu will define 1 to q coming here and then q plus 1 to n we put it uh, next to each other and try to rearrange the terms actually, it is always possible you can write in an expanded form right 5 1 1 5 1 2 5 1 3 all sort of 5 2 n by 1 and then you can put a big matrix for that and then take the corresponding elements that is relevant to this this one and then you take the corresponding element that is relevant to that one and try to put it together sort of thing. So, then you will have something like this x of x of t and lambda of t is something like that actually. Okay. So, collecting the appropriate entries of the phi matrix, the general solution can be written something something like that actually. So, where this is true, so me 1 to nu q and all sort of things are true, okay. And then we have this uh, system dynamics which uh, which talks about, uh, okay. So, this, uh, this x of t and lambda of t can be written something like this. This means uh, state transition matrix, state transition matrix here, not in terms of xf, but in terms of mu, where mu is something which is non zero basically okay, that we put it there now how do you compute mu that's the thing and then uh, before that we had to differential equation sort of i mean we need some differential equation for that and we need some boundary condition for that as far as differential equation is concerned we can put this solution whatever solution you are talking here back into the differential equation original system dynamics and you put it uh, there and we tell okay mu is non zero okay and hence the coefficient should be true and that is how we get the differential equation here so, this is exactly same equation as before, the differential equation part remains same. What is different is the boundary condition and boundary condition can be thought of putting like this. Remember the boundary condition is, I mean the expression is like this, x of t f is something like this, x of t f t f times mu now and mu is something like this, we define it nu 1 to nu q and then x of q plus 1 to x of n, okay. these are free variable, these are also free variable or these are non-zero values, so put it there and then you see that x of t f what is my boundary condition? My boundary condition tells that first first q elements has to be 0, then q plus 1 to n we do not know, this is free actually. Okay. So, you put 0, 0 and then this guys and then on the right hand side like that. So, if you really want to match it, what is happening here, then the this you can partition the matrix like this way and that way. Okay. So, this uh, this first q by n entries has to be 0 because the, the ultimate result has to be 0, no matter these are non 0, but the result has to be 0. So, they have to be multiplied by 0 okay. and then we have this uh, this part which is equal to that. So, this is this would not contribute that means the first n by n minus q times q that that element has to be 0 and this would be equal to that, this one should be equal to that. So, that means that is identity matrix. So, that is how we get x of t f t f okay. So, this is what the matrix that you have to take into account. Okay, so, but we also need lambda of tf, ttf, I mean tftf. So, similar exercise you can do for lambda as well. We put lambda 1 to lambda q and then 0 is there actually. Okay. Okay. 
x of t f. So, lambda of t f and remember lambda of t f we discuss we derived somewhere here lambda f lambda is 1 to I mean u 1 to q and then 1 of 0 actually. So, we put it there ok. So, that is our expression lambda 1 to q at final time. So, lambda 1 f of 2 lambda q f then 1 of 0 actually and right hand side is our mu vector and mu vector is defined that way that is our definition. So, we put it that way also the same express same similar analogy that is this this part has to be 0. So, the bottom half of the this matrix has to be 0 bottom not really half, but this dimension n minus q by n that kind of thing actually. These are n minus q dimensions actually. So, this has to be 0, but this has to be equal to that actually we know that that is the boundary condition ok. So, the because this boundary condition needs to be satisfied. So, we have this this one equal to that and hence we have this identity matrix actually here and this should not contribute. So, that means that is 0. So, we have this lambda of t f t f is equal to that and x of t f t f has to be equal to that. Okay. And the differential equation is also available to us actually. So, now we can have a closed form solution basically. Okay. All right. So, this is the closed form solution, this is what we what we have here, and this is what you I mean, these are the boundary conditions for that. So, we put it. So, essentially, we talk about this is the differential equation, but the boundary conditions are not same as what you had it in the soft constraint formulation. The boundary condition has to be something different actually. Okay, x of tf tf and lambda of tf tf. Using this boundary condition and this differential equation, the procedure remains exactly same as before. Okay, and uh, now we cannot guarantee that x of t zero t f is non-singular. Okay. Okay, that's another uh, observation here because part of the matrix, the final condition, the bunch of rows are zero in both the both the boundary condition actually. So it may it may percolate that ultimately even if you integrate it backwards and all that, it may or may not the be the case that this uh, this matrix is non-singular. But if it is non-singular then mu can be computed ok. Remember this times mu is equal to x naught actually right. So, so, mu can be computed and hence we have this this solution there ok all right. So, then our control is given like this exactly same as before and again this simple data system that wherever you are initial condition is that. So, t naught can be your current t then it can be argued that this is nothing but your gain matrix actually ok. So, just a small little more observation ok for continuous data and all that that is what I told you this it has to be t naught, t naught goes to t and then we have this gain matrix and all that actually ok. But only problem here is when t goes to t f this x this state transition matrix x should go to t x of t f t f right because t goes to t f. So, this is just by definition it should go to that, but if you see if you observe x of t f t f what is our x of t f t f this matrix and this matrix is guaranteed to be singular ok unless q is equal to n that we do not know Un unless you put every uh, I mean uh, constant in every state and all that 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 becomes even further difficult problem anyway. But if you put that that is a different case but otherwise it is guaranteed to be non guaranteed to be singular basically. So, we have this difficulty coming up here basically. Okay. So, as t goes to t f you are guaranteed to get a some sort of a infinite gain basically ok that means your control is guaranteed to blow up actually. Okay. So, this is not always advisable to have a very high ambition uh, as 0 terminal error and things like that that way. If you have then be careful ok it may lead to a control solution which may not be implementable at the final time or close to the final time actually which typical happens in PN guidance of missile dynamics and also sort of that we see later also actually. Yeah. Anyways, this, so this makes sense as you are insisting on 0 terminal error you are insisting on hard problem. So, we will end up with a the difficulty there actually. So, all right. So, that is what I wanted to discuss in this lecture. In other words, the, we saw two formulas, two things here. One is the robustness thing, how do you uh, tackle some parameter inaccuracies and all. The second thing was how do you come up with alternate solution of through the state transition matrix ideas. And there we discuss about uh, two ways again one for hard constraint problem and one for the soft constraint problem. Soft constraint problem is not much of a problem, we can go ahead and do that. Hard constraint problem we will end up with this as the singularity. I mean not initially, but towards the end actually when t goes to t f is guaranteed to be singular, singular actually. So, k of t has to be I mean it typically blows up to infinity actually. Let us keep that in mind and application on all that uh, using this ideas and all we will uh, we will see that in another class actually another lecture. So, with that I want to stop here. Thank you.